From Mountain Home to Raft River, we've got all the District 4 analysis you'll need to know. This is the Magic Valley PrepCast with Scott Burton. That's right. Welcome in another edition of the Magic Valley PrepCast here on IdahoSports.com. A weekly breakdown of everything District 4 in the state of Idaho. Uh, Brandon Bainey is always joined by uh, Scott Burton. Now, if you're watching the video version of this on the IdahoSports.com YouTube channel or Facebook page, Scott's had a lot of fun in the past couple of weeks with uh, changing his his little name placard at the bottom of the screen. You'll see our names are right there to identify who we are. Uh, initially, you had Kelly Leak from Bad News Bears, and then it was Tiger Woods last week. And now here, because we're talking a lot of baseball on the on the prep cast this week, Ricky Vaughn, the uh, sensational starter turned closer for the Cleveland Indians, <laughs> major leagues one and two. Absolutely. How we doing, Brandon? It's uh... Great to be talking baseball. It's funny because when you just came on, uh, we've got a baseball game going on outside right now. And it has been since Idaho's in its fourth winter uh, right now. Um, I was just shown a given a video. Um, Let's see. Hang on. And that's our baseball. Whoops. Yep. You see the snow? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Good luck trying to pitch in that. <laughs> no, right. So that's what we're dealing with right now in across Idaho. Uh, in fact, this game that we have going on right now, I think, was canceled and then reinstated about three times today as weather came through. Canceled. No, wait, the sun's out. Oh, hey, we're on. Wait, it's hailing. Okay, no game. Wait, sun's out. And that went on all day. And now we're in whatever's going on outside right now. It's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, let me ask you real quick, because where I live, uh, we got like four to five inches in some spots. And so it's not a matter of just, you know, is it snowing? Is it not? But it's clearing off all of the snow that hasn't melted yet. Um, how many inches did, did you get in the Magic Valley? Uh, the Magic Valley, if you start in like the Twin Jerome area, we're not getting anything that's really sticking. It's just wet right now. Um, but if you go east towards Minico Burley, uh, they got some that stayed on the ground. And so that prompted a, a cancellation of a uh, track meet for tomorrow. Um, and we've also have, I'm looking at my, my calendar, um, we also have a baseball game in Minico tomorrow. So we're hoping to get the field over there cleared um, with no more moisture because we have Pocatello coming in. So it's going to be Pocatello, Jerome, and Minico in this three-way baseball thing in, in Minico tomorrow. So who... Who knows? But the problem is with all of this crap going on, we're running out of dates to reschedule. And so I know every other AD and coach is kind of in the same boat, but my goodness, this spring has been a disaster. And it seems like we say that every year for whatever reason, but man, we're running out of dates to reschedule. Yeah. And like in, in some of the areas that got, you know, four to five inches that could wipe out a whole week. Like there, the, there are teams in East Idaho that basically mm-hmm. said you know, we're done for the week and we're gonna try and backload the schedule as much as we can. When that happens, do you do you get rid of those non-conference games to fit in your league games? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to, you know, and that's too bad because you know we we have a lot of great relationships with a lot of our non-cons and you know we want to keep them, but uh, you know they understand too that uh, the conference games have got to come first. And uh, we can't afford to waste arms or anything like that on a non-con when we're trying to jam pack a schedule full of these conference games that means seeding in the tournament, you know, and, and then plus on top of that, our kids aren't getting the games, the game experience that they need. You know, I mean, you, you, you write an original schedule with 20 games and next thing you know, you're playing 14 of them. It's like, well, gee whiz, what happened there? Well, <laughs> it's called mother nature and Idaho spring. Definitely. Well, speaking of non-con baseball, the Twin Falls Bruins had a great non-con doubleheader last week that really caught my eye because of the opponent. Mm -hmm. Uh, Twin Falls hosted the Vauxhall Baseball Academy. And now Vauxhall is located in Alberta, up north in Canada. And I recognize the name because I'm from Montana originally. And Vauxhall uh, plays with Montana in American Legion baseball during the summer. There is no high school baseball in Montana until this past year when they finally voted to approve it. So American Legion is all they have. So I got to know Vauxhall really well from that. Vauxhall 
participates in American Legion Baseball in Montana. So um, they've got this baseball academy where basically you go to school and you're doing your studies and getting ready for college, but otherwise it's baseball 24 seven, 365. So it was kind of cool to see them uh, come down to Idaho. Yeah. And you don't get that very, very often. Um, the Vauxhall team, and I think they're the Jets um, are, I mean, you talk about a baseball school, they are prestigious and uh, they, they have a lot of prospects come out of there. I mean, major league prospects. I mean, scouts are living um, at Vauxhall Academy. And uh, this is a this is a program, an well, academy really, that really is a pipeline to a lot of good baseball that leads to a bunch of major league players. Yeah, they basically take juniors and seniors and the occasional really rare sophomore and, you know, you have to apply and you have to, you know, it's just like anything. You have to be approved to go to this school. And like you said, they've got major leaguers. They've got, I think, about 20 guys floating around in in, in between college and the minors right now as well. So, that yeah, this is a, a program that moves guys on for sure. And so I was like, how in the heck did they end up in Twin Falls? Because they don't they don't just play anybody. I mean, they they schedule the toughest competition that they can. And so. I, that's why I asked you, like, if you could do some research into it and figure out how this baseball academy from Canada ended up in Twin Falls last week. Well, it's uh, it's funny because the, the the Twin Falls head baseball coach Tim Stadelmeyer, uh has spent twenty plus years coaching baseball in the area. You know, not a, not just with Twin Falls, but you know, with the Twin Falls Twin Falls Cowboys Legion, and um, he's had a a connection with Lesbridge. Lethbridge Spitz Elks, which is in uh, a Legion team in Canada. Okay. And they have come to the Cowboy Classic that the Twin Falls Legion team holds down here um, for years up until COVID hit. And then that was the before times. Now we're in the after times and who knows. But before COVID, they would always come down. Um, their assistant coach played at CSI years back. And, and you know, they've stayed in touch. Uh, Stadelmeyer and their assistant coach, um, stayed in touch. And he's also an assistant at Vauxhall Academy. So connect the dots. You can see where Twin Falls has got this tie to this Vauxhall Academy. And um, so they got introduced to the head coach, uh, Coach McTavish, and uh, they've been friends over the years, Stadelmeyer and, and McTavish. And so, you know, so what they do is when the schedule permits, Vauxhall will kind of make its way south, stop in Twin and play a doubleheader with the Bruins. And it's a very mutually respected relationship because, you know, Vauxhall is, like you said, they don't play everybody. They will stop and play programs that they have a lot of respect for. And <clears throat> Twin Falls is one of them. And Twin has just been a perennial state contender for years. And so, yeah, you bet they've got respect. So they stop in Twin and they play a doubleheader at CSI. Then they continue south, go to Salt Lake. They play a doubleheader there before heading to – Vegas to play in a, a, a tournament hosted by a national powerhouse, uh, Bishop Gorman High School. So, I mean, boy, you talk about some name dropping uh, that we just did. I mean, Gorman, Vauxhall, I mean, that that is, that's legit. But that's how that connection happened, is through some relationships um, and a CSI connection uh, as well. And next thing you know, Vauxhall's working their way down, stopping in Twin. That's awesome. And you talked about the initial connection was with Lethbridge, which is also in Alberta. The mm -hmm. Spitz Elks, they are actually sponsored by the Spitz Sunflower, Sunflower Seeds, Seeds Company yeah. because the, their factory is in Alberta. Yeah. So it's kind of a cool deal with, with that as well. Um, yeah. Now, the two games didn't go well for Twin Falls, right? They, they lost both games, but against a, a uber caliber program like Vauxhall, which, by the way, has been doing baseball stuff way longer than twin falls has in terms of the season right mm -hmm. twin right. falls had a winter sports season well they don't have that at the baseball academy so um all things considered i thought twin falls competed well even though they lost both games of that doubleheader yeah they did they you know the thing is when you when you have a team like that that comes down the last thing that you want to have happen is to get blown out you know because you want it to be worth their while coming down you know the game one yeah pretty ugly. It was 14 to three and twin had a lot of issues on the mound. Um, but the second game went into extra innings before Vauxhall ended up winning seven to four. So it, at least for, you know, that rivalry, they were able to compete, you know, in that second game. And and that's great because I mean, if you're Vauxhall, why do you want to stop and run? Well, 
people. I mean, that's no fun. Um, but, you know, twin battled and, and uh, they lost them both. But the second one, they lost in extras. Tell me about the thing, yeah, the one other thing yeah. about that, too, um, is that, you know, Vauxhall started this kid on the mound in game two uh, that's throwing 92, 93 miles an hour. And the L.A. Dodger scout was there to watch him. You know, I mean, that tells you a little bit about this Vauxhall. You know, they have a Dodger scout checking out this kid who's throwing 92, 93. There, there is a lot of connections with Twin Falls and, and Major League Baseball, right? Matt Haar, uh, who was the longtime Twin Falls baseball coach, uh, he got drafted by the San Francisco Giants back in the day and actually played for back when Pocatello had a minor league team for the Giants. He played for the Pocatello minor league team. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then uh, there was a Major League Baseball player that made the opening roster, opening day roster this year from Twin Falls, Damon Jones. Yeah, for the Phillies. He, yeah, he qualified uh, on the pitching staff for the Phillies. So it's really cool to see these Major League Baseball ties to Twin Falls, Idaho. Pretty cool deal. Yeah, pretty cool deal. And that just uh, shows you how much of a baseball town Twin Falls has become. You know, their programs there in the baseball world are top notch. And that's why they're good every single year. Yeah. So when you look at Twin Falls, I mean, you, you're going to see in the standings, well, they're eight and nine overall, but that's because of the very tough schedule that they played. Mm-hmm. Most importantly, they're six and one in conference play. They have a, a three game lead in the win column, a one game lead in the loss column. Their only loss came to Wood River. And so I'm sure that's a game that the Bruins would, would love to get back and they will uh, meet up with Wood River on. Let's see. They actually did. They already played Wood River. So and they took it to them. Yes. Okay. I was wondering if the rematch was coming, but it, it happened last week, right before this doubleheader with Vauxhall. So they're mm-hmm. going to say, we lost two to Vauxhall, but we won the important one over Wood River, right? Yeah, no, that's exactly right. You know, and you, and you look at overall records right now, and that's what people really want to look at. It's, oh, well, they're 14 and three. It's like, well, are they a good 14 and three? Well, you take twin who, would you say, eight and what, eight nine? And nine. Eight, eight and nine. Okay. But they're better than a lot of 14 and three teams out there uh, just because of that. And case in point is their conference record. And even though our conference, I think, is going to be a little bit more wide open this year, uh, it's been dominated by twin over the years. Uh, Canyon Ridge sneaked in there last year. But I think it's going to be a little bit more open. But twin is still the favorite until somebody can beat them, you know, and uh, it's uh, they're a really good team. uh, Twin is. So you're going to you're going to. Probably, I would say you're going to take two teams out of this district. How does Twin not be one of them? I mean, that means they're taking third in the district, and that just doesn't happen in yeah. Bruin baseball. Definitely not. Another team in the Magic Valley for baseball that you would look at the overall record and go, yeah, so what, is Glens Ferry. And we're going all the way down to 1A now. Where yeah. Glens Ferry, when you look, they're 5-5 five and five overall, but – they're three and zero in their conference, which, by the way, they're the only team from District Four in this conference. They're the only one A team in in District Four that plays baseball, so they have to join with all the District Three teams in that Boise area. So every game is a road trip for Glens Ferry, basically. But they're three and zero in the league, five and five overall, and they just hosted their annual Wood Bat Tournament over the weekend, where they went three and zero. By the way, yeah, uh, the Wood Bat Tournament. If you've never been to one of those, it's it's a lot of fun. You know, uh, you, you kind of get rid of the composite bats and you swing some lumber and uh, you really get to find out uh, how much power you're swinging and how much power you're not swinging, you know, uh, because it's a different game when you play with the wood bats. And it's uh, for Glens Ferry. That tournament is a huge fundraiser for them. And it's it's one of those things that is growing every single year. You know, they had 11 teams in it this year. Uh, they had to partner a little bit with Wendell to host a couple of games, but it's it's filled with really a lot of two A teams. And, you know, we talk a little bit about how you're going to play these other teams to get better. Well, you know, that's kind of what Glenn Sperry's doing. And, and a lot of it's by default. They have to, you know, because they just don't have those one A teams that are playing baseball. But yeah, I mean, they started their season uh, with losses to Wendell Gooding and Declo, you know, all schools that are bigger than them. And, um, but uh, now they're starting to, to get a little better and, you know, they had a, a really good showing at this wood bat tournament. They hope that's going to kind of launch them into some more wins. Yeah. And it wasn't just, you know, your average run of the mill uh, programs coming. You mentioned some two a teams were there, including Nampa Christian, which is like a two a powerhouse. I mean, right. 
how, how many two A championships have they won over the last ten years? All that of one. them, yeah, <laughs> or that nine one. of them, yeah, <laughs> right, a few. So, so when you have a program like Napa Christian saying, "Yeah, your tournament is worth our time," yeah. I think that says a lot about about the tournament. Oh no, and that and that's a really good way to measure that too. Is is tournaments are measured a lot by the teams that want to show up there. You know, and when you get those kind of powerhouses coming down, that says a lot about what Glens Ferry's doing, especially with this wood bat tournament. You know, and and the, one of the things that uh, when I was talking to Coach Martinez about it, you know, one of the things that he said is camaraderie. You know, he said this particular tournament just has a, a bunch of camaraderie tied to it. You know, a lot of brotherhood, just these teams coming together, doing something different. They're all getting along. They're all having a fantastic time. Uh, he just said it was a different atmosphere, but it's such a positive vibe that, man, it's just growing in popularity. Yeah, so the, it's always fun to play with the wood bats as well. Scott, you played baseball. Uh, did you ever get to you know, compete with the wood bat versus the aluminum bat? Yeah, I did. And, I, man, I tell you, it's, it's, it's a little different. It's a little different because the sweet spot is uh, a lot smaller. Um, you're obviously not getting the jump off the bat as you would with a composite or aluminum bat. Um, you know, so the cool thing about this, and we always thought of it this way too, is, all right, you got all these guys that think they're all that in baseball, right? Oh, I'm, I can take a yard anytime I want. I'm bringing the power. I mean, nobody can stop me, whatever. Okay. Then you put a wood bat in their hands and we'll see what you got, because what this does is it, if you really step back and look at it, it makes you appreciate what some of those big leaguers are doing, you know, because their bat speed and their power is just ridiculous, you know, and, and we don't get that feel when we're swinging all these aluminum and composite bats, but you put some real good lumber in your hands, you get a little bit better appreciation for what the big guys are doing, you know, and it can humble you really quick too. Yeah, the ball. Uh, I've noticed the ball just dies a lot more. You know, a ball that you're driving deep to the outfield might not clear the infield with a wood yeah. bat. So yeah, it is, and, it, and it's different because you know what you'll see is sometimes you'll see the game adjust a little bit on how you're you're obviously the outfield isn't nearly as deep. Um, you're you're playing in a lot more. Uh, you're, you're you're just defensively in, in maybe a couple of different spots that you know that you're not going to get that jump off of the bat like you normally would. So maybe you're playing a little bit in on the infield, just a little bit, you know, uh, those kinds of things are really, really different, you know? Um, and that's what makes the wood bat thing fun because it is different. And, and it is something that uh, these kids don't get to experience very often. And so why not do it and have some fun? And I think that's part of what is, is making the draw to this tournament is because of that. Everybody is battling the same thing. You know, everybody's battling the wood bat thing and they're all having fun doing it. And that's yeah. what's bringing that brotherhood and that camaraderie together. It's because they're all doing the same thing. And, and it's so cool. Yeah, this is a Glens Ferry team that's uh, really good. They, they went to state last year and I broadcast the 1A state tournament. So I got to see Glens Ferry yeah. up close and in person. They've got a great pitching staff. Wyatt Castanetto behind the plate at catcher is tremendous as well. So they, they beat Garden Valley 5-3. to three. Soda Springs seven nothing and Chalice Mackey. I believe that that co-op they're called the River Cats, right? Chalice. I think Mackey. so. I think yeah. so. They've got yeah. a unique name, Chalice Mackey. They beat them six to five in that seven nothing shutout over Soda Springs. Glens Ferry got an outstanding pitching performance from Parker Martinez. Yep, the coach's kid threw a no no, and uh, anytime you throw a no no, it doesn't matter if it's wood bat, aluminum bat, doesn't matter. It's baseball. You just threw a no hitter. No hitter ball right there. It is something you will always remember. And, uh, you know, for for Parker Martinez, uh, it, I mean, just the thrill of having that on your resume now uh, is great. Uh, the celebration, fantastic. And they did it against a, a 2A team. You know, I mean, it, it's a bigger school. They shut them out through the no hitter. And uh, they think that uh, that gave them some momentum. And now they feel like they've got a little – swagger in their step you know and coming out of this tournament and doing as well as they did obviously having the no hitter i mean you're seeing this glens ferry team head into this back part of the season with a little bit of pep in their step you know and and so it would be interesting to see what they do moving forward with this momentum 
Yeah, well, their biggest game of the season is coming up uh, tomorrow night. So we're recording this on Wednesday, Thursday night. They will go to Settlers Park in Meridian to take on North Star Charter. They're the big bad team of 1A baseball so far this year. Second year program, but man, they get a lot of good players from those bigger schools in the Boise area. And so I don't know what the pitching matchup's going to be. I can't go to MLB.com and check the pitching probables like, like you can for the big <laughs> leagues. Um, but Parker Martinez, no hitter for Glens Ferry. And North Star Charter has a kid, Daniel Cormilo, and he threw a perfect game earlier this year. So what a pitching matchup that would be if it was Martinez and Cormilo. That's what I'm selfishly hoping for. Oh, yeah, no kidding. And, and, and really, the high school baseball is all about pitching anyway. You know, if you've got two or three solid pitchers, you are going to go deep into a tournament. And uh, and it's amazing that some of these smaller schools have that. You know, um, depth obviously is not something that these smaller schools have the luxury of, but a good solid pitcher can hide a lot of depth issues. Um, and, and that's what they've got in both those pitchers you just named. Definitely. And speaking of pitchers, yeah. Didn't uh, softball Glens Ferry have a no hitter thrown as well? Maddie Fink, didn't she toss one as, as well? Yeah. So she came out on Monday night and in, in a shutout win over Horseshoe Bend, Maddie Fink in the circle throws a no hitter as well. What's, what's going on in the water down there in Glens Ferry? I don't know, but we need to go siphon some of that and bring it up this direction. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, a couple of no nos, one from the softball, one from the baseball in the same week. That's pretty cool. And, and of course, Glenn's Ferry, the defending 1A softball champs. Um, so they, they've taken everybody's best shot this year as the defending champs. Frank Case, the uh, head coach there at Glenn's Ferry, does such a great job with that softball program. So a lot of good things happening in Glenn's Ferry. Yeah, absolutely. And, if, and uh, for those that have never been through Glenn's Ferry, what a beautiful area uh, as well. Just kind of down in the, the, the canyon area, the driving through. It's, it's the best part of the drive from here to Boise is driving through Glenn's Ferry. Yeah, and they, they've got such a great supportive uh, fan base and all that great stuff, too. So a lot of good stuff happening in Glens Ferry. And again, if you're at a school where a lot of good stuff is happening and you're like, hey, what do we got to do to get some pub? What do we got to do to get some love around here? Send me an email, Brandon at IdahoSports.com, and we would love to break down uh, – your school, your team, your athlete, whatever you've got going on, because there is so much going on that it's just, it's really hard for us to get to everything, especially in the spring. Oh, it is, you know, and, and the, and the cool thing about it is, and, and we mentioned this before, there are a lot of great stories out there that may have sports as the secondary um, headline, but the story of this person, whether they overcame something, whether, you know, they had something happen to them or whatever the case is, those are the stories that we love to tell. Uh, just because it's a it makes it more personal. I mean, we can all read a box score, but to, to have those backstories, um, if you know any of those, man, we would love to hear them. And we've had some great ones over the course of of uh, our podcast that we started back in the fall, and uh, our list our listeners have been just absolutely fantastic with giving us some of those leads, and uh, we want those to continue. Yeah, keep keep them rolling, Brandon at idahosports.com. All right, Scott, you said you got a baseball game going on that you probably need to get to and monitor at some point. So, yep. Oh, gee whiz. I'm looking at this right now and see, I'm, I'm so old school that flat bills. I, I don't do, I don't do flat bills. I, I, it is taking everything I got right now to, to not just crush this bill into the old way. It should be this. I don't know what this, I don't know what kids are doing these days. The only thing that's going to make this worse is if I pull it down over my ears. <laughs> there you go that's uh even worse so again uh if you're listening audio only at idahosports.com or uh, wherever you download your podcast scott just put on a jerome tigers ball cap with a very wide brim and a flat bill and if you cocked it to the side a little bit you'd look just like felix hernandez who used to pitch for the mariners that's kind of how he wore it not that yeah. far but oh, yeah. no, not quite that far just a little yeah off. Just, there we go well, i tell simple. you what ricky vaughn would never wear his hat like this no <laughs> <laughs> yeah no doubt so oh my word it's ridiculous yeah there you go that looks a lot better and you got the tag on that hat still too oh i know this was back this is this was like kind of 90 style wasn't it that's when you yeah. left tags on everything <laughs> i don't know what that was going to prove but yeah that was the way it was that was a different time but here we are i'm rocking yeah. a flat bill and a tag there you go flat bill and a tag that's the title of the podcast too so all right <laughs> 
Okay, well, we'll let you get out of here. Thanks for tuning into the Magic Valley Prepcast. For Scott Burton, I'm Brandon Bainey. We'll see you next time on IdahoSports.com. <laughs>